Hey guys, Canoopsie here, and digital storage is one of those things that we use every day but often overlook, such as the hard drive in your computer, the built-in memory on your smartphone, or even the tiny micro SD card that you just use for music. Digital storage is everywhere and is still advancing at such a rapid pace. It had its origins in punch cards and massive machines, but let's take a look at some of the more common and odd forms of digital storage and see how much it's evolved. In the early 1950s, a patent was filed for what would become the hard disk drive. The hard disk drive was one of the original types of digital storage and is still used today. When personal computers became commonplace in households, low on storage and expensive hard drives were often used, such as this 20 megabyte Apple Hard Disk 20SC that retail for $1,300 in 1986, which is equivalent to more than $2,800 today. Floppy disks were some of the most popular forms of portable digital storage. The commonly known 3.5 inch floppy disks range from 500 kilobytes of release to 240 megabytes in the final iteration. While they were still very popular during the late 80s and 90s, a few other alternatives started to move into the scene for more specific uses. In 1988, SciQuest released its first SciQuest disk with 44 megabytes of storage, but larger capacity versions came out shortly after. These disks were used by graphic designers and artists for transferring, at the time, large files but required the use of a clunky and usually unreliable drive. A few years later, the zip disk was released with 100 megabytes of storage, obliterated SciQuest disks and became the de facto standard, but also required a special proprietary drive to access files on the disks. And just two years later, iOmega, the same company behind the zip disk unveiled the Jazz Drive, which had a whopping 1 or 2 gigabytes of storage, but its mass appeal was hindered by its also massive cost of $399 for a 1 gigabyte external model. And yes, you guessed it, another proprietary and costly drive. These were just some of the most popular forms of digital storage, but there are plenty of other types of floppy disk variations and offerings from companies like iOmega. Floppy disks were definitely the most popular storage device during that whole period, but in the early 2000s, compact disks or CDs completely replaced floppy disks due to more storage and widespread adoption of CD drives in computers. Today we still use CDs, but we mainly use things like flash drives, SSDs, SD cards, and micro SD cards due to size, compatibility, and speed, but also cloud services like Google Drive. To conclude, humans have always tried to store memories, files, and media to be able to retrieve or share at a later date. But here's the complicated thing. If you had stored something back in the 90s in a SciQuest disk for example and you had to access it today, it would be nearly impossible. You would need a functioning disk, a functioning drive, and a computer with the necessary I.O. And if you actually got to the files, could your main computer today even read them? Things today are much more simplified in terms of storage, but we still deal with our own storage woes. Hard drives still fail, flash drives are still easy to lose, new faster ports like USB-C are becoming a thing, and cloud sites are being hacked all the time. There's very few ways to ensure that your data can stay safe and intact. The most tedious but common way to keep digital media is to back up to multiple devices in the cloud and continuously ensure that your files are safe. But face it. For simple information and important notes, the tried and true method of keeping information for a long period of time to avoid obsolescence is to write it down on a physical piece of paper. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like down below, comment your thoughts on the future of storage, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching.